Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Donnie Brook uh, Raceway. We are here to watch Iron Maiden and uh, Blink-182. Mark Hoppus, apparently now cancer-free. Uh, mm -hmm. These are good things and good times. Uh, good I am very attractive, and with me as always is the inventor of Swellery, the world's first meat-based plant snack, Michael Magus. Oh, I like this. I like where this is going. We are, as Byron said, here at Donington Park. And if you can't hear me, Byron, say something. I indeed can't hear you. Okay, just making sure. Because every so often we get that weird thing where the where the mic stops working when I'm on, not looking at TeamSpeak. Oh, right, uh, yeah. May, which basically means I didn't a open TeamSpeak as, a, as an administrator. That's, that's, that's when that happens, but apparently that is not the case. No, it has not administrated. <laughs> We are here at Donington Park for the final of the GT4 Britain series here with EASR. And uh, I'm going to go get us the championship. Uh, basically what the championship looks like right now. If race app would load, but it's not. <laughs> race app currently way more loaded than I am. I could probably guess who the championship contenders are, but I, I would like to give you, I would like to, you know, be able to give you that like. I'm going to go with without, championship uh, leaders currently Mookie Blaylock, uh, Mookie Betts, and uh, Bullwinkle the Moose. All right. So in the championship fight, we have Don Belanger, Matthew Higgs, Jeff Wentworth, Max Simmons, and because the uh, because the standings have already been updated, I'm not 100% sure, Mika what might be in the hunt. <laughs> I'm not sure, though. Uh, so it is at least a four-way fight. It might be a five-way fight for the title. So there you go. And then I think mathematically speaking, Paul Riccobeni is still in the hunt, but at the same time, not really. Wow. You're saying that like Paul Riccobeni ain't going to just run them all off the road. And well, uh, here, here's the deal. Here's why I'm saying this. Uh, basically, the deal is, is that Paul would have to do very, very well in this race, and the five ahead of him would have to do ba very badly. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of barriers there. That's just all I'm saying. Um, it's like Bertrand last, barrier. Last time we were at uh, Donington Park was for the GT4 World, uh, the uh, GT3 Challenge Series, and that was a really really good race with a lot of bumping and grinding and some contact. So Byron, you're probably going to get your great wishes here, and someone's probably going to get put into a wall. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind for legal purposes of the joke. <laughs> On pole position, we got Matthew Higgs in the Porsche, followed by Andrew Warden in the KTM, Don Belanger in the Aston Martin, Neil Sutherland, fourth place in the Porsche. So the Porsche is doing quite well. Adam Stark, fifth, Jeff Wentworth, Brian Baker, Mika Watt, uh, Mark Sutherland, and Dominic Turcott. So that's five Porsches in the top five and six in the top 11. And seven in the top 13. So the Porsche is doing very well here today. We'll see if that translates in the race. Uh, rounding off the field, we got Paul, Rick, Benny, Diego, Alonzo, Max Simmons, Josh McLaughlin, uh, Jamie Bayless, Cole McRae, Trevor Cheney, Tony Yumbo, Seth Cheney, and Cliff Hemian, who did not get a lap time in. And as a result, we'll start from the back. Do you think that uh, Cliff Hemian fans would be known as hemophiliacs? Oh, that's a good one. How have we not done that before? Because <laughs> I'm a genius and I saved it. <laughs> so I talked about the Drivers' Championship. What about the teams' race? Or what about the other races? Uh, bronze Trophy. I don't know how to break this to everyone. Trevor Cheney's got that locked up. Sorry, all, sorry to any bronze drivers who were hoping that they had a shot. They really don't. It is Trevor Cheney's. Uh, and in the silver category, again, not a lot of action. Mika Watt is uh, way ahead. <laughs> oh, man, there's not much more to do there. So uh, we're not looking not looking at a particularly interesting fight down the wet road there. I think I think I might have mentioned it, Zolder, that Cheney and Watt had more or less hoisted the titles. And uh, I don't think we're going to see those change hands. We here at ESR Racing uh, do not agree with the association of R. Kelly, R. Kelly lyrics, or singing of R. Kelly in any previous format other than it's really funny. 
uh, in the team's championship, maxed out Mika Sports. That's Max Simmons and Mika Watt. Probably not going to surprise you here, but with both their drivers in the hunt for the title, the overall championship have won the team's title. Um, generally speaking, when you have two of the top five drivers in the field on the same team, they've won the team's title. That's just how that works. So we're getting ready to roll here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good if you're a Mika or a Max fan and they're both nice guys. They're young, Boo. young up and coming drivers in the series in the ESR community. Uh, Boo. I'm going to crush the dreams. I'm going to go full <laughs> heel. I'm going to go full heel and just, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. Max can sometimes uh, frustrate me a little bit. Uh, that has been known to happen, <laughs> but, um, but uh, he's had just, an excellent, he's had an excellent series. Actually, he's had five podiums and six races. That's, that's damn impressive. You're just he's, jealous he's because really of his stamina on the track, which is a nice way of saying he's always the last one in the pit. Uh, almost always, yeah. He's he's uh, all, pretty much all the time one of the last three, I would say, for sure. Uh, and normally, if anyone pits later than Max Simmons, it's because they're behind him on the track and doing the same strategy, basically. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we got a hundred and uh, we got an hour and uh, ten minutes. That's an interesting race time. You usually see a seventy-minute race, but uh, also whoa. there will be a ninety-minute uh, warm-up phase. One of the Aston Martins getting very out of shape there. I'm think that I think that was Bre uh, Brandon Baker, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Green flag is out here at Donington Park. I do not know these corner names very well, but I can tell you the first the first corner is called Redgate, and it looks like corner two has no name. So you know that's always nice. I think I've told this story before, but I had no idea this was a racetrack because they hold a music festival here every year. Mm, well, I mean, it's more than just a racetrack. It is It is actually a park. Well, fair <laughs> enough. But I, I just had no clue because that's all I ever heard about was Donington, and it was always a music festival. I've never, until we started doing commentary, had a clue that people raced here. I wonder where the, uh, the, the, the concert grounds are in relation to the racetrack. I wonder if we'll see them. We might. We'll see. Maybe. This might be a, like a case where like the Suzuka has the theme park around it and we actually see like the Ferris wheel and the roller coasters and shit. That'd be interesting. But uh, Matt roller Higgs coaster. is off to the start in, in the lead ahead of Warden, Belanger, Sutherland and Wentworth. Now, the interesting thing there is that uh, Warden is not in the championship hunt. He joined this series late, uh, but he's kind of really involved in it because of how. Oh. One of the McLarens going down the inside oh, of Cole McRae. And either uh, it'll be interesting to see if the stewards have any thoughts on that. Either that's a turn in by McRae or a torpedo by uh, whoever, the, whoever the McLaren was there. Jamie Bayless by process of elimination. We have only one McLaren in the field. It makes it nice and easy. <laughs> um, so having only one McLaren does make it really easy to identify the McLaren. Um uh, either a turn in or a torpedo or a little bit of both. Both is possible. Uh, it does look like we got a pit stop required here. I assume there's a pit window. Uh, I don't know how long it is. Uh, again, I don't race in this series and I probably should do a better job of keeping up on its regulations. Yeah, you're supposed to know all the things. I'm just here that, for the ride. That, that is entirely on me and not in any way on anybody else. But Matt Higgs continues to lead. Warden in second. I assume this is also a double points race um, with the length increase. Although it is not double the length. Because double the length would be 80 minutes, not 70. There's your favorite car, by Byron. It's the KTM. Yeah, it's all right. That's the one that opens up all the way on the front. Like, there's, there's, no, there's no front door. It's like the whole car has to be lifted up oh, to get the driver right. out. That's, that's the one. I do appreciate yes. the fact that it looks like uh, mm -hmm. probably like a race car from the 60s. It's just like Maybe. all flat panels everywhere. Adam Stark battling with Brandon Baker. It looks like Stark has just gotten past Baker and up into... Oh, no, that's Mika what? Pardon me. So we, we just said that there was a, there was very few... Um, there were very few McLarens, but there are a lot of Porsches and a lot of Aston Martins. So bear with me on that. As Andrew Warden makes a mistake there. And Don Belanger going to move up into second place. Uh, what other unique cars do we have? We have a single Audi. That's Paul Rick and Benny. So that's nice and easy to identify. Uh, we have only one Camaro today. Interesting. That is Seth Chain. Oh, no, no, two. Both. 
Both Cheneys are here. Um, couple of Mercedeses, but not too many. We got one KTM. So three cars in the grid are unique. We got one KTM, one McLaren, and one... Oh, Audi. As uh, one of the Camaros there going around the outside and loses control and off the track. One of the Porsches went super, super deep there as well. I think that was Diego Alonso? Or it's possibly... No, pardon me. Guillermo Martinez. Guillermo Martinez. Too bad this isn't taking place in the States. Uh, well, could be, uh, Josh uh, McLaughlin getting a little physical. Uh, I thought that was fair. I thought he was up the inside there. I always And that has that nothing hey, to do with Josh. Oh! That was, that was a little clumsy. Josh McLaughlin. Yeah, the, the irony is McLaughlin, McLaughlin involved in both those incidents. I honestly think he was not at fault in either. <laughs> He's a killer. And, and it has nothing to do with the fact that that's my teammate. That's my quarterback. <laughs> you uh, interrupted me earlier very rudely to mm -hmm. point out some crashes, but. Indeed. If this was taking place in the northeastern United States uh, with all of these unique cars, there could be some unique opportunities in mm. unique New York. Mm. And then you could go watch some New York Yankees baseball. I mean, there could just be some unique opportunities if we develop a uh, racing promoter by the name of uh, Alejandro. <laughs> Let's see. Greatest heel wrestling authority character of all time. <laughs> Fuck Vince McMahon. <laughs> Correct. Mika Watt running in seventh place. Championship contender and silver champion. Not looking great from the championship right now. It's looking good for Matt Higgs, who has the lead, but Don Belanger is in the mix. He's in second place. Followed by Warden Sutherland, Jeff Wentworth, Adam Stark, Brett, Brandon Baker, Mika Watt, Dominic Turcott, and Paul Riccobeni, your top ten. You can see the back end of the top 10 there. That's Rick and Benny at the back of your shot in the blue and red car. And just a little bit behind him is Diego Alonso. Alonso's good having ball. to get around. Tony Yimbo, by the way, in the pits early. And it's not a good sign for him because I don't think the, the pit window is open. But I could be mistaken. Although I think I think if you have to pit, even if it's in the window, you have to pit six minutes into the race, it's still probably a bad sign. <laughs> it is a sign something went wrong. Or you didn't put enough fuel in the car, I guess would be the other option. Uh, I do love, oh, I, I, I just remember, this track does have this uh, tire bail, for lack of a better term, that is actually mobile. So every time the cars hit it, it bounces around and can possibly hit other cars, which is Neat. interesting. Um, it's at that uh, that chicane that we just looked a little while ago. So keep an eye on that. We'll see if, the, uh, if, the, uh, if we get a uh, wrecking ball moment. From the uh, from the tire bale. Perhaps some mischievous scamp will run out from the crowd and just push it onto the track. The interesting thing is that that tire bale will appear at different places based on different. Oh, two, a couple of cars off there. Cole McRae moving into 17th place. I didn't catch who it was off. We'll see. Tony Yimbo appears to have exited and thus DNF the race. So McRae's up to 17th. Seth Cheney behind him, as well as Cliff Hemmings. Eliza Guillermo Martinez was the off car. And he is now at the back of the pack. Um, anyways, I was going to say, the uh, the physics for the bail and like other kind of debris like that is all done client side. So it's your game doing it as opposed to the server. And as a result, that bail may be in different places to every, every driver on the track, which is intriguing. Set the ball on fire. Uh, I learned that the other night, actually. Josh McLaughlin kindly supplied that information as we were testing at Monza, and I was warning people about some debris at uh, chicane number one, the Redifilio. And he's like, it's not there for me. It's probably in different places for every uh, car because it's clients. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. That is weird. It does remind me of the time, though, that uh, a couple of mutual friends of ours, Jeff Crozier and uh, and Monkeysaurus Rex, uh got annoyed with me because I was beating them at race room and they actually created a, a barricade at one of the turns because <laughs> uh, it, it was a it was a track where there were it was Monza so there were there were these like kind of like crowd divider separation things basically and the two of them stopped on track and started moving them into a line across the uh, across the chicane so that I would hit it <laughs> just do what I do 
pull sideways across the track. <laughs> Eagle Wet running in eighth place. So it looks like the top five of Higgs, Belanger, Warden, Sutherland, and Wentworth have kind of gotten away. And there's a bit of a, a fallback to Adam Stark with Brandon Baker, Mika Watt, Dominic Turcotte, and Paul Riccobeni. And then there's another great gap back to Diego Alonso, uh, who's on his own, really. Max Simmons and Mark Sutherland are fighting for 12th place. Bayless is then further back, battling with McLaughlin and Trevor Chaney. And then there's another gap back to the last group of cars, Cole McRae, Cliff Hemian, and Seth Chaney, with Guillermo Martinez also kind of having his own day. So not a good day for the maxed out Mika crew. Um, they're in 8th and 12th place trying to bring this title home, and I don't think mathematically that's going to be enough. Well, I think the real problem here is that Mika Wood's not able to drive the bus like he does in uh, Wreckfest. This is, this is, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Look at if there's any really interesting turn names here today. Not really. Um, you know, there's the interesting thing that turn four is called the old hairpin, but there's no new hairpin. So that's a little disappointing. And there's a turn five and six are collectively known as Starkey's Bridge. That's kind of an interesting name. Dominic Turcott down the inside of Brandon Baker, trying to make a move happen. Baker's Sharky's lost a machine. spot. Baker lost a spot to uh, to Mika Watt. So he's having a bit of a rough lap, and he's going to lose one to Turcott, I think. Turcott down the inside. Paul Riccobeni looking at them hungrily. And Turcott is through. This is a very difficult track, I will say that. It, it, it's it's one where you have to be in a good, you have to be in a really good groove to get consistent lap times around here. I can tell that you're not a fan of Adventure Brothers because you didn't immediately bite on the Sharky's Machine reference. I did not, but I am a big, big fan I, of the Adventure Brothers. That's not true. This is very true. You didn't even say go team venture. Every, every, everything about that TV show is is very me. <laughs> what about Sergeant Hatred? Sergeant Hatred. Get those kids out of here. I can't be within 100 feet of them. <laughs> no, it's 150 feet. <laughs> Ew, I, yeah. Ignore me! <laughs> and the monarch. <laughs> ah, the deadly sting of the monarch. <laughs> ah. I used to be able to do the henchman really well too. I, I, li I like the Brock Sampson Phantom Limb uh, episode where they're they're actually allied together, and uh, uh -huh. they're like, "How do we get?" Uh, Brock's like, "How do we get past?" And Phantom Limb is like, "Leave it to me." He just throws himself out there. Oh God, my arms and my legs—they're gone. Oh my God. <laughs> the guy's like the he the henchman's like just looking at him, and Brock just goes, "Put him out of his misery. Here, I'll do it." And grabs his gun. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. It's a great scene. All this squabbling is actually letting Diego Alonso catch up a little bit to this group that is being led by Mika what now? Adam Stark what? is quite a ways ahead of them now. Was this about Diego Sanchez? <laughs> Diego Alonso, not Diego Sanchez. Oh, don't insult bad. the man like that. <laughs> my bad. My, I don't know how much head trauma this man's had. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there are very, very few people on the planet who have had anywhere near the head trauma that Diego Sanchez has had. God, he does it recreationally now. He does. He does. Uh, I don't know if it's even now. I, I kind of think it was always the case that he did it recreationally. No, I have some uh, sad wrestling tie-in news. Oh, well, feel free. I'm just going to read the headline and you can put it together yourself. Tennessee mayor refuses to comply with vaccine mandates. Oh, no. Well... Big red anti-vaxxer. If, if you know, you know. Yeah. It's really weird. I actually, well, you know what? Actually, it's not because he, he's, he, he, when he was trying to get, when, well, his political platform is very libertarian, which very much would be, anti, would not necessarily anti-vax, but would be anti-forcing vax mandates. So. Yeah. Oh, uh, top comment. Top comment with the hug gif with, Brian Danielson, he used to make a living wearing masks. <laughs> oh, shit. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a good one. It's oh. true. The original mask would have been incredibly good for for, for uh, preventing COVID. Uh, he could be so popular. He could be like the mayor, the masked mayor that has all the fucking, yeah, I wear a mask all the time. Doesn't bother indeed. me one bit. Indeed. 
Indeed. I'm a big honking sexual Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> Cue pictures of Lita falling in love with him. Oh. Yeah. Which, by the way, that might actually be one of the grossest storylines they ever had. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, boy. Lena's career went real downhill after she broke up with Matt Hardy. I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. I think there's, a, there's some retribution going. Like, I think there, there Matt Hardy had a bunch of fans in the office. There may have been. Oh, boy. There's Although they probably were, a bunch they of fans had, that weren't in charge of anything and then became well, well, they in charge they, of stuff. they definitely weren't in charge at the time because he, yeah. it was Matt Hardy that got fired, if you'll recall, mm -hmm. uh, during that time period. Which was a bit tone deaf. Yep. I don't think it actually had anything to do with it. I, I, think, I think, honestly, they were paying Matt Hardy a fair bit of money. There were no competitors at the time, and yep. he was injured. I think I think that's what it comes down to. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah. Sometimes you wonder what WWE's thinking, then you realize these people are very, very petty, and that is the answer. Yes. Uh, they're led by a man who was born before the turn of the previous two centuries. And, uh, by the way, Jamie, Jamie Bayless has fallen to the back of the pack, so we missed no. something happening there. Well, no matter where you are in the pack, Jamie, you are the Bayless to me. <laughs> I don't know what That's that means. But about 7.4 7. seconds behind Guillermo Martinez right now, so... Doesn't look like anyone came with uh, came uh, as well, so probably a single car accident, I would think. But we'll see. Pit window is open, so it is a 40 minute pit window today, and everyone's got to make a pit stop. And uh, I think otherwise, we're kind of pacified right now. The gaps are pretty consistent. I would say the only real battle is this one on track right now: Belanger versus uh, versus Warden. I mean, Jeff Wentworth is close to Neil Sutherland. He could probably try to make a play, but Jeff is. A relatively cautious driver. I think he'll probably try and play the pit, the uh, the pit strategy, as opposed to making it on track uh, right now. And everyone else is fairly spread out. Oh no, actually, yeah, there's a good battle between Seth Cheney and Guillermo Martinez going. So Martinez has gotten himself back into this fight uh, with some good laps. So it is not over for Bayless yet. Magal, I hear that there's a 94-day pit window for this race. Is that true? There definitely is not. Uh, I've been sold a pack of lies. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you could do a 94 pit window in a GT4 or GT3 car. You'd run out of gas. <laughs> We're going to have a 72,000 day uh, enduro. Uh, no one gets to leave the car and uh, you uh, can only pit between February and July. Oh boy. Adam Stark in the Century Porsche uh, Tikino? Uh, Tikino, I think, is the team name. Tikitos? Tikino. Isn't that uh, somebody's nickname from Brazil? Torquino? Pro uh, well, that was, that was uh, who's more Paul Harris? Was there you go. Tree Stump or whatever it was. Yeah, Tree Stump. The man who destroys knees. Yep. Torquemada. Oh, speaking of destroying of knees, actually. Uh, so, for change, Tito Ortiz gave an interview that wasn't about, like, being a fucking idiot right-winger and was yep. actually about MMA for a change. Uh, the interviewer asked him about the first time he met Dean Lister. And he's like, I was at a Pride show. This is, he's like, this is uh, 2005. So I'm, I'm thinking it's probably during the Grand Prix when Lister fought Arona is my guess. Oh, yeah. Um, and Tito was there as part of Rampage's team. And Dean Lister comes up and shakes his hand and just says, I want to say I'm a big fan, really big fan. Always wondered how you made 205. And then I looked at your legs. It like starts <laughs> staring at the legs. He's like, those are very thin legs. And Tito's like... <laughs> Never has a man been so interested in my legs. It was a very concerning once I realized he was shaking my hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Tito is built upside down. That man has got a head, <laughs> it is a head huge, twice huge the size of a human and head. Very, a very small bottom. That man is built like an upside down eggplant. And the, and, and, the interviewer, so and, the, and the interviewer is, is like, 
So what you're telling me is that uh, T- Dean Lister never stops uh, plotting how he's going to knee-, knee bar someone. That's that's what you're telling me. He's like, that is correct. Yep. <laughs> Dean Lister always like locking. <laughs> Warden's still on the tail there. Brandon Baker has fallen back to 10th place uh, off camera, losing a spot to Paul Riccobeni. So we still got some overtakes to go. Max Simmons has moved up to 11th place, so there is still some shuffling going on here without the pit stop. Warden looking down the inside. This is into, I believe, the Melbourne hairpin is what this turn is called. Turn 10 and gets the job done. You kids and your jobs. Up into second place where he qualified. Which is a big deal because, again, Belanger and Higgs are, I would say, the two guys right now fighting for that title. Uh, we said that there were five people in the fight at the start of this race, but the other three are not really in the position to take the belt right now. They're not having the days that they need. And uh, it looks very much like it's a higgs Belanger fight. <sighs> Out of curiosity... What's this about a higgs, higgs boson? As it stands right now... Higgs would still require other people to pass Belanger. So Belanger in third place is right now your championship leader. Uh, so he Higgs needs some favors. He needs Neil Sutherland. He needs Jeff Wentworth. He needs Adam Stark somewhere in that mix to get up there and challenge for a podium spot. What Let's I see need if it happens. is I need Big Higgs to take his son by the ear and take him down to the Navy Yard and have him hooked up on a ship so that eventually he can be promoted mm-hmm. and then he can be the Higgs boatswain. Mm, I like it. One of the Camaros One there. One of the Cheney brothers, Seth Cheney in this case, battling with Cole McRae and Guillermo Martinez. So Martinez has overtaken both of them. So he's moved up from 20th place to 17th. So we're watching a good comeback attempt here from Guillermo Martinez. I'm going to Superman and that hoe. Superman that hoe. Uh, no sign of pit lane activity yet. Only three bronze cars in the field today, the two Chaneys and Alonzo. A couple silvers. Five of them to be exact. Mostly a pro field, which is interesting, because GT4 are usually the home of silver and bronze drivers uh, in real life, but in ESR, it's much more platinum and gold. As Martinez looks down the inside of Seth Chaney into the S's and makes the move there. Cole McRae had a side-by-side contact with uh, Jamie Bayless earlier on in the race through there and kind of pulled the same move that Bayless did. So interesting, interesting moment as Cole McRae learns uh, from the past and uh, makes things happen. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to be laughed not, at in I, the media. I'm not really sure why that chicane is called the S's according to this track map because it's not an S. Is it shaped like a T? Well, I mean, I, I mean, it is shaped like an S, but like all chicanes are, but it's a chicane, not an S's turn. So that's... Uh, yeah. that, that's well, it weird. should be like the C's, right? Yeah. Because there's two, at least you flip a C around and you got an S. Mm-hmm. True. Um, <laughs> so, Combo breaker. Interesting name for a turn. Let me know if turn nine is not named that, uh, and in which case this track map is just wrong. But it is off of the official Wikipedia page, so I assume... It's correct. <laughs> Agreed. There's a Starkey's Bridge and a Starkey's Strait, so I'm assuming Starkey is a pretty big name in the Donington Park area. Sharky's Machine. Paul, Rick, and Benny going side by side with Baker through Melbourne, heading down to Goddard's. I think that's where we are anyways. I could be mistaken. Yep, this is where we are. Last turn on the track. And Rick and Benny will, for the time being, hang on to ninth place, although he is giving up the inside run here into turn one. And into Redgate, it is going to be Baker who does get it done. So Brandon Baker to ninth place. What about uh, Brandon Candlestick Maker? <laughs> that would be interesting. Look 
see if there's any other movement going on right now. A couple battles going on. Mark Sutherland's up on the tail of Diego Alonso, but they're in the same world. Oh, picking up Guillermo Martinez. Cole McRae, he wants more. He got uh, Seth Cheney. Now he wants Guillermo down the inside of Redgate. Guillermo's got a little damage Ooh. and gets shoved wide there. I would say McRae had established the room there. I would say that that is a Guillermo problem. And In Cheney the words of will also ACDC, You want blood? You got it. Mm. This case, well, in this case, you want carbon fiber, you got it. <laughs> also true. Looks like a little bit of damage there to Martinez's front end. Actually, a fair bit of damage. Uh, if I were him, I'd be thinking about a pit stop right now. Uh, we're... We're not where I'd like to make a pit stop normally. We're not halfway through the race. We don't have accurate necessarily tire readings, fuel ratings, whatever is a drive through penalty comes in for Josh McLaughlin. So that's bad news for the debuting Janetta driver. Uh, I believe McLaughlin should actually be a silver driver, not a pro driver. So that is a sixth silver driver in the field. I don't want to say Adam Stark was a silver driver coming into this, but I could also be mistaken. Through the S's once again. And that is Cole McRae going very off the track. Not sure what happened there. Into the int into the uh the beginning of Melbourne there. He wasn't near anybody. Looks like he just made a mistake coming out of the S's. Maybe catch maybe caught the curb a little bit hard. Meantime, Diego Alonso under pressure from Mark Sutherland. Battle of Porsche Pride as Josh McLaughlin has served his drive through penalty. And we'll see where he rejoins Cole McRae into the pit lane. So that might be McRae having a tire related issue uh, from that spin. Either that or he was planning to make a pit stop with about 45 minutes remaining in the race. Could be could be all according to plan. I love it when a plan comes together. There is your championship leader as it stands, Don Belanger. In third place, that is good enough. And Neil Sutherland ducks into the pit lane in behind him to get his undercut going. Max Simmons is catching up to the battle between Baker and Rick and Benny. This is always a downside of having a good scrap is the car behind you is, you know, in clear air getting to run his lines and uh, getting closer and closer as uh, Baker into the pit lane. So a couple of cars have elected to come in now. Looks like this might have been the time where people thought the tires were coming coming off a little bit. Alonzo and Sutherland going through your picture. Paul Riccobeni currently in first place. That's just a glitch with the, the thing. <laughs> Paul's had an interesting season. Been a championship contender. He's got a pair of podiums with a second at Woolton Park and a third at Snetterton. So the British GT tracks have been happy hunting for him, and this is the third of them, uh, Donington Park. Seth Cheney and Guillermo Martinez. Cheney has gotten ahead of Mart or he was already ahead of Martinez when Martinez had the uh, the contact at Redgate, I think. Long pit stop for Baker. Interesting. Might be, might be something more uh, problematic there. Uh, Jamie Bayless into the pits. You can say he bailed on that one. You could. Most of the cars yet to pit, but a couple have been in. Neil Sutherland served his time. Brandon Baker, Cole McRae. Bayless is in there right now. Let's see who else goes in. A little surprised Martinez has not gone in. With everyone... Oh, no! Seth Cheney gets knocked into a spin by uh, Martinez, but he, being the gentleman he is, holds up and lets the Camaro continue. Thou dost spin me right round, wench, right round. <laughs> into the S's again. Someone's taking out one of the signs there. <laughs> into the Melbourne hairpin and then into Goddard's. We'll see if either of these guys think about the pit lane right now. If I was Martinez, I would really think about it. 
42 minutes left in the race. Not a bad time to make a pit stop. And uh, clearly he is carrying a fair bit of damage. Cliff Hemian into the pit lane. But Martinez will continue. It's Hemian's Mercedes. Hemio. Paul Rick and Benny up into eighth place, but this is pit stop assisted. We've seen uh, Neil Sutherland into the pit lane as well as Baker and has promoted Rick and Benny a couple of spots. Under pressure from Max Simmons. The maximum of Simmons assists. Maximum Simmons. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Which I mean, you know, it could also be Maximum Siemens. We ride on board with Jeff Wentworth in fourth place in the Mercedes. Mika Watt in seventh. Having a decent day is Mika, but just not, it's not a championship winning day. But to his credit, he will be getting his first piece of ESR hardware in terms of the trophy cabinet as he takes home the Silver Cup in this series in dominant fashion. Um, I want to say he was the top finishing Silver driver in every race up until this point of the season. Um, just having a look to make sure that that is the case. Uh, and it is. He has indeed won every Silver race. So, Mika Watt dominating the Silver category. Seth Cheney. And Guillermo Martinez continuing to battle over 15th position, at least for the time being. Correct. Mike, I have a sports question for you. Hit me. So I was watching the foosball game. Uh, I think it was the Eagles and the Cowboys. And okay. uh, there's a guy on commentary, and he keeps referring to certain players as man beaters. Is this a, a like a criminal thing or I, sexual I thing. I have not or... heard this terminology. So I this is new to me as well. didn't understand if this was like a... Is this a kinky thing? Could be a kinky thing. Could be like just an assault crime thing. Could be. I, I, Maybe I both. Know. Maybe like this is... Like, get come over here! And this is like, what? No, just like, get your hand out of my pants. <laughs> I mean, they get arrested. The whole league gets arrested every year anyway. So, I mean. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I mean, there's there's been a long, long established criminal history and in, uh, in, uh, that is usually ignored in the NFL. So maybe they've crossed Blue the line. Flags out. Now it's encouraged, like, just on the field sexual assault. Oh, uh, maybe. And it maybe. wasn't just one time. This guy said it at least four times. Interesting. Uh, Cole McRae appears to be having some problems. He is down in 20th place and uh, briefly it disappeared, disconnected from the server, it looks like. He's back, but he is uh, two to three laps down. And so some blue flag traffic is starting to happen because of the pit stops. Uh, Cliff Hemian and Jamie Bayless falling down a lap. And uh, we've actually had a, a really underreported story it has been this battle between Alonzo and... Uh, and Mark Sutherland, as I get a text message, probably my dad asking for more money. Actually, it's me asking for more money. That would involve me giving you money. Well, I mean, how could I have less money than the money you don't already give me? So more. Ha, huh, I fooled you logically. I have no, uh, he's just asking for the password for the transfer. Oh, that password is admin admin one two three. Well, it's weird because it's the same password I used last time. <laughs> admin admin one two three. It's the same question as uh, the question Sutherland, being how do you Sutherland spell? trying to go around the outside of Melbourne hairpin. I don't think that's going to work out too well as he gets escorted to the curb by uh, Diego Alonso and actually Cliff Hemi. Oh, we pick up Paul Riccobeni heading into the pit lane. Also in the pitch, Josh McLaughlin. This time it is to serve his actual pit stop. He had been in for a drive through previously. And Brandon Baker coming to a stop. He pitted. Did he not take fuel? Okay, maybe he's just letting the blue flag through. Although he did let Cliff Hemian through, so he actually did lose 17th place there. Baker was fighting for a top 10, and now all of a sudden is fighting with Hemian and Bayless. What is... What is going on here for Brandon Baker? Uh, Brandon, you got some explaining to do. Hit us up in the, the comments. Yeast has expired. 
Hit us up in the comments because you got some explaining to do. Uh, also in the pit lane, Trevor Cheney. Looks like, oh, this is Neil Sutherland, not Mark Sutherland. Never mind. Wrong Sutherland. Northerland. This is what you guys get for running the white and silver cars. You got you guys could have done like green and yellow or wow. blue, blue and red. I don't know something something a little more Are you differentiating. That you can't differentiate between white and silver people, Michael. Are you um, saying that si all white and silver if, people if, look if, the same? If they're side by side, yes. <laughs> wow. Diego Alonso on the tail, or uh, pardon me, Mark Sutherland on the tail of Diego Alonso. And in the background, there is the lapped, the lapped cars that are battling to stay out of last place. Hemian, Baker, and Bayless. Good to see everybody's more or less got a partner to dance with here today. Although Adam Stark's a little on his own. Him, him a little bit less so. Oh! Sutherland getting very close to the edge of uh, Alonzo's uh, rear end there as he heads into the pit lane. Teammate Matt Higgs still leading the race. Has led, I think, every lap. What about every and other lap? I can tell you that Diego Alonso is in pit stall 25, as they are helpfully numbered there. Cliff Hemian with Brandon Baker on his tail. I still don't know how Baker ended up back here, to be honest. I'm very puzzled by this. And uh, in the background, you can see the McLaren 570S of Jamie Bayless. Seth Cheney. On another lap in his Camaro. This will briefly put him as the bronze leader. Although I think Alonzo will probably easily retake that once... Uh, Cheney hits the pit lane. Chain, chain, chain. Might see a move here into the S's. Baker kind of thought about it. Decided he wasn't close enough. Just follows Hemi in through. As they head down to the Melbourne hairpin. Which is another good overtaking opportunity. But a dangerous one because this is a deceptively... Oh! Hemi goes wide. And Baker sells on the outside and takes the inside. Don Belanger in the pits. So the champion elect in the pit lane. We'll see He's about to he... get Hemi owned. Oh, maybe. I say there Clifford. Is, there is the Aston Martin of uh, Belanger rejoining. I think he's got the Beach Dean racing colors, I think. And uh, Cliff had me in actually racing for one of my favorite team names, Bullet Racing. <laughs> Bullet. Just look at it. Yep. It's uh, Paul Riccobeni. Let's Adam Stark there through. That is a blue flag scenario. Not sure who that is ahead of uh, Stark right now. It's not a battle for position. That'd be another blue flag. That's either Alonzo or Martinez. And uh, Alonzo by process of elimination. Alonzo has come out ahead of Paul Riccobeni. That's interesting. Adam Stark going wide. And that will cost him a spot to Dominic Turcott. Moving into fourth place on track. So Alonzo had a really good pit stop. It looks like he's j he's not only retained spot over Mark Sutherland. Um, assume it, well, once Sutherland gets in the pits, we'll know that. But he is retained. He has jumped Paul Riccobeni. A bunch of pit stops going on right now. Matt Higgs, Dominic Turcott, Adam Stark, Mika Watt, Guillermo Martinez, and Seth Cheney all in the pit lane. So yet to pit. We've got Andrew Warden, who's out in the lead. Jeff Wentworth going long. Interesting. Max Simmons, Mark Sutherland. And that is it. So four cars left to make their stop. We've lost two today. Tony Yimbo as well as Cole McRae. Cole's all swolled up. There is the other Janetta, Josh McLaughlin. Racing the checkered flag liveried uh, Janetta there. Coming up behind Guillermo Martinez. I think Martinez just came out of the pit, so his tires may not be up to full temperature. These cars do not have uh, tire warmers in the pit lane, so 
The lap out of the pits is very tricky. Stop, go penalty for Dominic Turcott. That I would assume would be speeding in the pit lane. I'm not sure what else would render a stop go. I know track cuts would be a drive through, not a stop go. So that would be speeding in the pit lane, I'm pretty sure. Unless somebody can provide a correction in the comments below. Uh, correction. I said provide a correction, not just say correction. <laughs> Don Belanger in fifth place. So he's come out behind Matt Higgs. What is the gap? 9.1 seconds. Feet. Quite a bit. And it'll be the interesting thing will be where uh, Andrew Warden and Jeff Wentworth come in in relation to those two because that could decide the title. Cliff Hemian still battling with uh, Jamie Bayless. They've left Brandon Baker behind as well as Seth Cheney. There is Don Belanger sure which of the Camaros that was behind him. Probably Seth Cheney, I would think. I'm trying to see who's made up the big wins here in the pit stop. Well, Adam Stark is a bit of a loser through the pit stop phase. He lost a spot to both Dominic Turcott and Nico Watt. Might lose more, depending on how Simmons comes out. Uh, another... Winner is Mark Sutherland. He's overtaken both Diego Alonso and Paul Riccobeni. Riccobeni's lost spots to Alonso and Sutherland. Turcotte in the pits to serve as stop go. Uh, another winner in the pit stop phase appears to have been Jamie Bayless, who's come out ahead of Baker and Cheney. Although Baker was overtaken on traps, so I don't know if that's really a win from a pit stop standpoint. Matt Higgs getting waved through there by one of his teammates, either Diego Alonso or Guillermo uh, Martinez, probably Martinez. Uh, judging by the fact that that is Josh McLaughlin up ahead. Vote for Pedro. Yes, vote for Pedro. Into the pits comes Jeff Wentworth, so just Warden and Simmons yet to pit, and that is actually... Uh, oh, that's Turcotte serving his stop go, right. I was trying to figure out who that other Porsche the pit lane was. Uh, that would be Mike Stoffmill. Mike Stoffmill has entered the race with 20 minutes to go. Oh my god, he's got a steel chair. <laughs> it's Mike Stoffmill with a steel chair. But Mike Stoffmill is the perpetually baby faced one. He would never use a steel chair. Well, but he can get away with it like Stone Cold. Oh. Well, Stone Cold really is kind of a weird, like, ne never, never since replicated baby face. Correct. Deal. Like, anti-hero because babyface. they won't let anybody goddamn wrestle um the closest i guess would be like a john moxley in AEW. yeah i mean john cena could definitely get away with it they just don't let him do those things no problem if your name's john or stone cold you probably get away with i it. mean the story in wwe back in the background of wwe is in that john cena uh more than once campaigned that he should turn his character heel <laughs> yeah Specifically after Roman Reigns came back from the from the cancer. That, that was the last time Cena was like, you know what? I should be the heel here. <laughs> As Andrew Warden comes into the pit lane to serve his pit stop. So our last pit stopper of the day will be, to the shock of no one watching this video, <laughs> Max Simmons. My goodness. As Paul Rick and Benny trying to gain back some spots that he lost in the pit stop exchanges. He's gained one back on Turcotte, who served a stop go. But now it's Diego Alonso that he would like to get next. And uh, Mark Sutherland is quite a way up the road. So Sutherland, Sutherland had a really good pit stop to jump the two of them, I think. And Rick and Benny must have had a pretty slow one. Um, either a mistake or just a lot of damage to fix as Max Simmons now comes to the pit lane. So Max did not stay out long enough to get a, rate, a lap lead for a change. And we'll see where the KTM of Andrew Warden comes out in relation to Higgs and Belanger. Stop, go penalty for Brandon Baker, but he wasn't in the pit lane. So there is another way to get a stop, go penalty. I'm very curious. Mr. Baker, if you could please inform us what the deal with that is. Because a track cut normally is just drive through. I could go for the drive through. It was a bit weird. Y'all got some Taco Bell? Mm. So Higgs has come out in the lead ahead of Warden and Belanger. So Belanger 
still championship leader, champion elect, and has 15 and a half seconds to the good over Jeff Wentworth and Neil Sutherland a further two back. So it's looking real good right now for the Aston Martin. But after pit stops, here's the rundown. Higgs leads from Warden, Belanger, Wentworth, Sutherland. What? Stark, Simmons, Sutherland number two. Alonso, Riccobeni, Turcott, Cheney, McLaughlin, Martinez, Hemian, Bayless, Baker, who has a stop-go penalty, and uh, Seth Cheney, or Cheney number two. So we have a look at the champion elect. Don Belanger working his way through some back traffic. It's Cliff Hemian ahead. Jamie Bayless behind. And the inside gets the job done. And the blue flag is cleared through Goddard's. What about the single S? S's. No, no, it's just one. I know that's the weird thing. It's a, it's 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 the S's, but it's a single S. <laughs> I think they should have they should be forced to change it to the single S that we used to try to pluralize for no particular reason. Or and they have or, to say that out loud every single bear, time. No, no, bear bear with me, bear with me. They have to rename it the Byron Chicane. I, I mean that's not necessary, but I appreciate it. <laughs> It does feel very much like a chicane that you would you would design, though, to be honest, because it's it, the way it is done. It is such a tight, sharp chicane that it's absolutely set up to possibly create contact. <laughs> I'm good with that. It idea. is. It is absolutely. It is. It's right up ahead of us, actually, right now that we're looking at right now. It is very much set up to bait someone to try and go to the inside and then get and then get smacked in the side of the side of the car. That's that's what that that's what that turn does as uh, Rick and Benny's still trying to catch up with Diego Alonso here. Andrew Warden putting pressure on... Pardon me, that's a blue flag scenario. That is, uh, that's Josh McLaughlin he's putting pressure on, so that's not for position. We have a plaid flag event. Repeat, we have a plaid flag event. <laughs> Abandon all stands and stadiums. There is the blue flag, actually, just as we're talking about it. McLaughlin will leave the inside open to the KTM of Warden. Mike Stoppmill's got to come back because Andrew Warden is, is starting to rival him for dominance. SR. We, we were cheated out of Stoppmill versus Mons. We must have Stoppmill versus Warden. I'm done for that. It's Neil Sutherland continues to run in fifth place. Checking out all the signs at trackside, see if there's anything interesting. You know what? Uh, well, we know what really has to happen at some point for ACC, and that is the addition of Road America so we can be real cheese ACC. I have a special announcement to make. It is, it is. I have information that must be imparted immediately. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, this has come to my attention that Arnold Schwarzenegger has direct, once directed an episode of Tales from the Crypt. About a man who skipped leg day. <laughs> this is interesting. Real. It's called uh, the switch. Okay. I don't know anything else about it, but I do know that it's true. I was actually just double checking to make sure that we would get Road American ACC at some point, and we will because it is part of the uh, SRO America Series. Oh no! McLaughlin getting to the back of Guillermo Martinez. On the start, finish straight. Hemian's coming through. Bayless is coming through. Where is Seth Cheney? Is okay. Seth Cheney is quite a ways behind. Martinez is stationary and not mo not moving. There what is I Seth Cheney. I like to move it. Move so he's it. dropped to the back. Who have we lost? Cause we're down to eighteen cars. Uh, Mike Stockman. Looks like Brandon Baker uh, has uh, has left the race after receiving a stop go uh, penalty and having just some weird behavior uh, Martinez is still not moving here and he's going to he's gonna end his day so down to no. 17 cars here at the final round of the GT4 championship 
Just hold on, Paul. They're all dropping like flies. You're gonna win they this. They are dropping like flies. And he's also taking this top 10 spot back from Paul or uh, Diego Alonso, who's quite a ways behind. So would have been interesting to see what happened there. Josh McLaughlin now defending against Cliff Hemian, who's defending against Jamie Bayless. Three-way fight. Are you ready Ginetta, for the... Ginetta v. Mercedes v. McLaren. Are you ready for the headline of the day? Hit me. Drunk Turkish man spends hours helping search party hunting for a missing person without realizing it's him. Oh. Apparently he and some friends were drinking in the woods. He wandered off to probably take a leak or whatever. Uh, didn't come back. They reported him missing. He found a search party in the woods looking for him. So he just helped them. <laughs> Turkey has got stuff like that. There is a person on the challenge who was from Turkey. Did two seasons. Uh, name of Turbo, not real name. Turco. Uh, Turbo. It was. I think it was Turco. Was actually his name, but Turbo is what they called him. And it, there was a. So there was a challenge where you had to tie. You had to tape someone to a chair. And he got picked to tape one girl to a chair, and told us a story about how he was on an airplane, Turkish Airlines, and one of the passengers went insane and was starting to try to like escape the plane. And the uh, flight stewardesses came up to him and said, Turbo, we need you to help us tape him to the chair. <laughs> and I'm like, this is getting weird. <laughs> you know you're an expert. Please help. Ne needless to say, tur the girl in Turbo, the Turbo and his partner did win the challenge. <laughs> Hell yeah. Because <laughs> the girl he was taping to the chair did not escape that chair. Did not. <laughs> Ride on board with Jeff Wentworth in the AMG factory Mercedes car. Running in fourth place. Back to the battle between McLaughlin, Nehemian, and Bayless over 14th position. Been an up and down debut for McLaughlin. He's also got his flashers on. What's with the four ways there, Josh? As uh, Hemian Oops. goes down the Sir, inside of the, uh, Hemian gets down the, <laughs> Hemian gets down the inside the of the. That's true, Hemian gets down the inside of the Melbourne hairpin, but cannot convert convert the overtake. So McLaughlin continues to lead. McLaughlin's Janetta has got a considerable lack of power uh, when compared to Hemian and uh, and Bayless's cars. There, the Mercedes and the McLaren, which are much gruntier machines. But it handles very, very well. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do. This first sector here should be where he needs to make up ground because he's very vulnerable to approaching the S's as well as the Melbourne hairpin. And we'll see if he can keep himself in front here. With the Melbourne hairpin, you get the Sydney chicane, you get the fucking uh, Perth uh, parabola. <laughs> I wonder if this would be the best run Janetta's had all season. We've not had a lot of Janetta's in the field. Uh, Cole McRae and Ayrton Tobin, I think, are the other drivers. Uh, yeah, Tobin DNF'd Brands Hatch. Hasn't done anything else. Where is Cole McRae? Cole McRae. Wow, this... Uh, yeah, so 17th has been the best that Janetta's done all season. That was Cole McRae at Brands Hatch. In fact, it's the only finish the Janetta's have. So, Josh McLaughlin... Uh, on a pace for the best result for the Janetta brand uh, here today at Donington Park. Marta Janetta? Janetta. Wrong spelling. It's not even close to being Marty Janetti, unfortunately. Well, that doesn't stop me from associating with things That's I've heard true. before. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. So Matt Higgs continues to lead here, looking for his second win of the season. Previously a winner at one of the Silverstone uh, races, the doubleheader that was there. Uh, Don Belanger looking for his fourth podi uh, fifth podium of the season, and Andrew Warden second. So no strangers to the podium here. Uh, Warden previously a winner at Wilton Park, and Belanger, of course, winning the last round at Zolder to take the championship lead. This is only Warden's second race, so when I say he's on pace for his second podium, it's a lot more impressive than than that probably sounds. <laughs> uh, Bayless has overtaken Hemian. I didn't see that. And is now pressuring McLaughlin through the first sector. 
Again, if Bayless can stay close to McLaughlin in the lead up to the S uh, chicane, it's a good spot to be. A little bit wide there. Looks like some damage to the front of Bayless. The bonnet is uh, standing open a little bit. Here we go. Into the chicane. Bayless down the inside. Can't make it happen. Why not? That's a good, that was a good view. Uh, Don Belanger, in the meantime, looking back at a lapped car. So I'm not... No offense, Don. You're the champion elect. But I'm not really sure why you're being shown right now. <laughs> As they head through the Melbourne hairpin. Jeff Wentworth coming through. So the blue flag's complicating things. You got a three-car battle. And Wentworth coming through under blues. Heading into the Melbourne hairpin. Hemian's going to go wide. Probably wasn't the greatest idea. That does clear the blue flag, though, for Wentworth. And we'll see how he can make it through against Bayless as well as McLaughlin. Let's see what happens here as we head into... Sorry, I'm not great. I'm still not great with the corners here. I think that's the old hairpin that they're going through there. I mean, I just named them all. Four. They're all named after Australia places, aren't they? <laughs> Only one is. There's just the Melbourne hairpin. And the uh, Mawada Wada turn and the uh, didgeridoo <laughs> off the your billabong. The didgeridoo. Uh, Bayless goes a bit wide there, and that lets Wentworth get through. Kind of. Wentworth had to ride the curb a little bit hard. This is a bit of a hard. This is a bit of a hard track for the first half of it to really clear and really make overtakes happen in general. It's really just the second half of the track into the into the S's as well as uh, Melbourne Hairpin Goddard's. So that's really the kind of the three key overtaking spots on this track. Here we are going into the Alice Springs Apex. Crikey, there's a crocodile <laughs> coming out of the track. Neil Sutherland under pressure from Mika Watt. So what's putting together a late charge here? Let me get up into the top five. Championship probably out of reach, but he is uh, doing his thing. Adam Stark also in the mix there. And gold Porsche. Max Simmons into the top ten in eighth place. So these guys are good. This is going to be interesting because we got a three car fight here for sixth place and they're catching or fifth place, pardon me, and they're catching up to a three car battle for 14th place. And there's going to be blue flags and this is going to be rough for like the last 14 minutes. What happens when they go around the wallaby uh, fucking uh, stop? Now, here's the question you got. You have to design a turn. It's called the Komodo Dragon. Uh, oh, Bayless sideways. Uh, the Komodo Dragon chicane. What do you do with that? Does it like turn yeah. the cars upside down? <laughs> uh, well, first of all, it wouldn't be a chicane. It would just like I would literally try to make it look like a Komodo Dragon's head mm. and shoulders. Mm. So it would be this really <laughs> weird, fucked up like you'd enter in the like around the shoulder muscle. So it'd be a nice, nice round incoming to, with a hairpin that goes right up the neck. And then you so get this suck. kind of a swoopy jawline suck. thing and then another hairpin turn and then another hairpin turn. And... So, you, so it'd be a, a soft curve into a hairpin into an S's, like a proper S's. Thing. Maybe. And then into another and, to, and big, then into a double hairpin. You go, yeah, basically go into 290 degree turns because you got to have like the top and bottom of the jaw. And then maybe a little extra little, just to be a dick, small turn after the straightaway coming mm. up the top of the head, just a bump over the eyeball. Ah, I like it. I and like it. then little, little it goes upside down. <laughs> well, there you go. Joy, so that, that'd be, follow it'd be me a hell for of more track mania track building advice. <laughs> it sounds like a track mania track that we, we can make happen. I just assume that's what you were talking about. Ah. Byron's classics include Kill the Jobber mm. and uh, Hairway, uh, Hairway to Steven. Hairway to Steven is uh, well regarded as a uh, is. as a track. It's one of the, it's one of the favorites of the Land Party crew. Actually, I did do one for your birthday. Indeed, indeed. 
I did do one uh, that's shaped exactly like uh, genitalia, and it is, <laughs> it is in fact called Byron's Giant. It's called Byron's Giant. It, it's, a, it's a good one. <laughs> these are jokes. Follow me for more highbrow humor. <laughs> um, I can't remember. There was one I remember I did that if you just, all you do is hit the accelerator, you can finish the whole track. Let's kill the jobber. It, no, no, because you got to hit the right. Oh, oh, you mean the oval one? Maybe. Um, I don't remember. I thought it was. I don't remember I, tried I, to, I, know, uh, I, I I can picture it in my head I see it I'm driving it right now but I don't I, remember the title yeah I don't remember I remember there's one that I tried to make that all you have to do is hit the accelerator and do not try to steer because if you try to steer you're it's it's you throw the whole thing off and you're fighting it the whole time I've I've, I've highs uh oh it's high speed it's just called high speed is it Okay. Yeah. yeah that's, that and then there's sense. a dirt version that you did, which that's, wasn't quite as good because you have to brake. But yeah, that sounds like the, my clever titling system. Yeah. High speed. You got high speed and then high speed dirt. Oh right. Actually, I might have made high speed dirt first because uh, uh, Megadeth okay. song. Other other ones. Circus left the town. The ten ply challenge. <laughs> You've got these all right there behind, beside you, do you? I just I opened up the folder on my nice. computer. It's good to know that they still live somewhere because they're not on they my computer here. anymore. They are here. Chechen McNugget. Chechen McNugget. Hell yeah. Community Taco. Crawling out of the bowl. Cry Havoc. Deep Down and Dirty. End of the laneway. <laughs> Isn't Deep Down and Dirty like really long? It's really long. It's it's like six minutes. <laughs> yeah. That was one of like, I tried to get super creative. And it is. It's super creative. But it's so long. Five Deadly Venoms. Excellence, uh, excellence of Mex Execution. Flatworm. Free wheel challenge. Do you remember that one? That one's hard. Oh yeah, because you hit like what, like two to f somewhere between two and five zippers, and then you just yeah. have to steer the rest. It can be done. You just gotta, yeah, and then it, yeah, it goes uh, free wheel. You gotta keep the momentum yeah, up. There's no one more mistake and you're fucked. That one. That one was <laughs> neat to design. Anyways, back to the race. Matt Higgs still leading by a fair bit over Andrew Warden, 4.3 seconds. Don Belanger still in third, which is good enough to win the title. Then, uh, then it's Jeff Wentworth. That man you're looking at right now, Neil Sutherland, who is under pressure still from uh, Mika Watt and Adam Stark. Both are catching up to the battle between Josh McLaughlin and Cliff Hemian. Interesting enough, McLaughlin has gotten has lost a spot to Hemian. I'm not sure how that happened, but that is now uh, 14th place for Hemian in the Mercedes, thir uh, 15th place for the Janetta. Murder Janetta. <laughs> They really do need to make a, Gen a Janetta Marty. <laughs> but just like make a Janetta and like color it up like the Rockers outfits from the, uh, the 80s. Custom livery options right there. Put Marty Janetta's face like right on the hood. Mm -hmm. Fuck that Shawn Michaels kid. Mm. He it was, is hard to it is hard to believe that that Marty Janetta was considered the star of that team. He was for the longest though. time. I remember it when I was uh, when back when I was a kid. I remember seeing the Rockers and watching, loving the Rockers, and they could never get a w the the win, and it pissed me off. That was I was a huge mark, and still am to some degree. Um, but it, uh, I remember that Shawn Michaels would come in and do his flashy shit, but Marty Jannetty really kind of was the team, and he was kind of the workhorse. He was the, the glue. He was the yeah. Glue Trevor Cheney going a little bit wide there. It's, uh, I think Jeff Wentworth coming up to lap him, so that's not too much of a problem. I think Cheney's kind of on his own right now. Solid run, though, from the 99 car. Solid season in general from Trevor Cheney. Blue flag out. There is, we'll make it happen through Red Gate. And he's not that far ahead of the battle between McLaughlin and, uh, and Hemian, so he does have to keep it clean, but, uh, not under any major threat right now. Diego Alonso looking back to Dominic Turcotte, who's trying to come back from that stop-go penalty. Putting the pressure on. 11th place, Diego Alonso. Porsche on Porsche. Heading towards the S's. Nothing this time. Why not? In behind, in behind them, that's Andrew Warden, the second-place car. He's trying to make his way through traffic. Diego Alonso can do his teammate a little bit of a favor here by holding up Warden uh, under blue flags. Legally, of course. 
Yeah, listen, you do what you gotta do. As Turcotte lets the pass happen for Goddard's. There is Matt Hicks, the race leader for uh, most of this race. There was a brief transition period where the pit stops happened and he was not the leader anymore, but uh, he's been effectively the leader this whole time. What if he was the ineffective leader? I guess he would have been Donald Trump. Ew! Oh, let's not try, try not to get too political. Eh, eh, eh. I saw an opportunity that I took it. I didn't say I blamed you. Follow me for more political humor. <laughs> I think it's cool follow, that uh, Vidal follow, Sassoon follow, has sponsored this car. <laughs> follow Byron's uh, Twitter that only gets active every like five years. Yeah, no, yeah, I'll make another Twitter account at some point and then like forget what it was. <laughs> Jamie B. I'm not sure why we're looking at Jamie Bales. Not really close to anybody right now. Kind of see Seth Cheney in the background. McLaughlin has fallen about two and a half seconds back at Hemian, so it looks like that fight for 14th has resolved in the favor of the Mercedes car. And Dominic Turcotte still chasing Diego Alonso. They get through. I assume this is probably the battle we're going to see for a bit. Paul Rick and Benny has dropped back. So Rick and Benny's had a problem. He's actually behind these guys now. And with five and a half minutes to go, he's going to have to try and climb back to 10th place. And Diego Alonso into the top 10. Alonso's had an excellent season. Second to Trevor Cheney in the bronze standings, but uh, still having an excellent, excellent time. Has proven to be uh, an improving driver, a rising star in the ESR ranks. And battling with Dominic Turcotte, who's often been a championship contender, but has yet to yet to have that, that defining season yet. Uh, this season's been interesting for him. It's had some highlights. Fifth place at Zolder. Very good. Sixth place at Woolton Park in the wet. Very impressive. Neil Sutherland making his way alongside Mika Watt. Watt trying to take that fifth place from him, and he will. But Watt is through. What? Mika Watt. Top five, Who? baby. Top five. Mika Watt. Mika who? Mika Watt in the house. I hear that uh, that might be the new Jay-Z song. What has had an excellent season, starting off with that podium at Brands Hatch. He has not replicated a podium since, but pair, uh, you know, eighth place at Snedderton, seventh place at uh, Silverstone. Had a bad second Silverstone race, admittedly, but uh, eighth place at Wilton Park, seventh at Zolder. Been a very consistent, very solid season for him. Just the kind of thing he needs to punch his ticket into the uh, the ranks of the gold drivers. And, uh, now he will lead Neil Sutherland as well as Adam Stark. This is Sutherland's first full season in ESR and he's done an excellent job as well. Regular fixture, fixture in the top 10. Took fourth place at Zolder, his best result of the season. What kind of seasoning? Uh, kind of like probably a peppercorn mixed with uh, with allspice. My goodness. You know what? Back in the day, everybody's watched and loved uh, Good Eats, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, he used to tout this thing called Grains of Paradise that was supposed to be like the next new big hotness, and it's never taken off. Never taken off, I would have to look. I just remember that I said seasoning out loud, and I don't know what jogged that memory, but I do remember at least at least three or four episodes. He's like, Brains of Paradise. Oh, well, you can get them online, but you can't get them in stores. Quick note. Uh, once again, that 14th position has changed hands. McLaughlin is now ahead of Hemian by quite a bit. I don't know what happened there. I called it too soon. I said the Mercedes had the edge, and it appears it doesn't. You're a kid, you kids and your hemions. 
one of the V8 uh, Camaros there struggling a little bit towards the end of this race. Not sure which Cheney that is. Look back from Mark Sutherland in the Porsche Motorsport car. Running in nine. Oh boy, very off the track there for the Camaro in the background. Mark Sutherland's not had the uh, not had the season that Neil's had, but uh, still a pretty solid one. A trio of top si uh, top tens along the way. Sixth place at Brands Hatch being his best result. This being the season finale, I'm kind of giving like a little bit of a recap to everyone's season uh, as we go. Adam Stark, a new addition to the field, hasn't been here very long. Made his debut at Zolder, picked up a tenth place. Bring in seventeen today. Drive through penalty for Diego Alonso, so probably some track limit abuse. Uh, from the Porsche. That's not good. Let's see if that results in any changes here in the late stages. Max Simmons, excellent season. Runner up at Zolder, runner up at Brands Hatch, double podium at Silverstone, and at Wilton Park. He's had an amazing season. This has been one for the ages. Has not gotten a victory this season. That's kind of the one thing missing. But uh, I think it'll come. The one thing that uh, he didn't uh, really fully understand is if you do too well, then uh, you get promoted to the secret underground ESR Fight Club and you have to fight me. <laughs> Maybe not. You'll find out. Neil's Neil Sutherland looking back at Adam Stark. Battle for sixth place. Should be the final final lap here. Maybe eh, probably one more after this. Not sure where the race leader is. That'll of course depend depend on it. Good run here into the Melbourne hairpin for Stark. Around the outside though. And on the inside it will be Neil Sutherland holding position. What's this about a stork? That is uh, one of the Cheneys. That is Trevor. Setting up to get lapped here by Mika Watt, Mar uh, Neil Sutherland, and Adam Stark. Jamie Bayless running in 16th place. Not over Again, not overly sure at some of these camera choices. <laughs> oh, they're fine. You, you want helicopter camera the entire time? Yes. No, yes, I, we do. I mean, no, just shut up. I mean, shut, up. Yeah, shut up. We do want that. We do, we do. We, we we want, do want that, camera. yes, but. But I meant more like just the, the points of uh, looking. I mean, like, we got this great battle between Sutherland and Stark going on. That also involves Mika Watt. And yeah. instead, we're, we're you know, we're checking out the car that's in 16th place. This is it's, true, uh, but the uh, we've never been able to get the settings to do what we want ever, mm -hmm. so. Indeed, indeed. It's a constant, it's a constant hunt. He's Cheney still hanging on here under blue flags. And kind of being oddly defensive there. What's going on? You do see the yellow. You do see the. There we are. Kind of dangerously get letting everyone through at the S's. And uh, that's actually Max Simmons getting into the fight now. Oh, off the track. Uh -oh. oh wait, I think I think this is after the checker flag. <laughs> that's not as much fun. I, th I think that was Matt Higgs and uh, and and uh, and uh, Andrew Warden celebrating. Which was a uh, 30 second penalty for Diego Alonso for not serving the drive through penalty that he got late in the race. Max Simmons coming to the line. That is a blue flagged car to his inside, so that's not a battle. Will finish in eighth place, capping off an excellent season. Your winner today, Matt Higgs, but your winner on the season, Don Belanger in third place. Andrew Warden joining them on the podium in second. Jeff Wentworth, Mika Watt, Mar uh, Neil Sutherland, Adam Stark, Max Simmons, uh, Mark Sutherland, Dominic Turcott. And your winner, Paul um, Riccobetti. So let's see. With the 30-second penalty, I think Alonzo's only going to get demoted one spot. Paul Riccobetti will move up to 11th. Uh, he was about 42 seconds ahead of Trevor Chaney, so I don't think that that's going to come into play. We're just going to move the decimal point so it's like 1.1 place. <laughs> Uh, and then we got uh, Josh McLaughlin, uh, Cliff Hemi, and Jamie Bayless, Seth Cheney, we lost Guillermo Martinez, 
Brandon Baker, Cole McRae, and Tony Yimbo along the way. Thank you for joining us for the GT4 Championship. Congratulations to Don Belanger, who wins the championship with 582 points. Hell 557 yeah. for Matt Hicks. 543 for Wentworth and, Ma- and Max Simmons. We got a tie. Ooh. Um, although Wentworth will get the tiebreaker because he won the brand's hat trace and Simmons did not. So kind of like coming out there with the uh, when I said that Simmons really, uh, really might regret not getting a win this season. <laughs> well, it cost him third place. Uh, Mika Watt rounding off the top five on 496, what? followed by Paul Riccobeni, Neil Sutherland, Dominic Turcott, Mark Sutherland, and Trevor Chaney. Top 10 for Trevor Chaney. Nice. Indeed. So, Byron, do you have any final thoughts as we leave the GT4 series and Donington Park behind for the time being? Bananas are slightly radioactive, so scientists say to minimize the risk of harmful radiation dose, you should never eat more than 600 bananas per second. Stay safe out there, kids. <laughs>